California Fish and Game, now the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, have they been very active here? I mean, I, they're, they're, they are spread out very thin across California. Yes. They're yes. one of the regulatory agencies that don't have enough personnel. But do they get here? They do get here, and they, ha they are aware of the problem, and they have been here. They have attended meetings where we've had group discussions about what's going on and so forth, and they, um, I believe Fish and Game came in on the aircraft situation because they, when they realized 40 nests had been deprecated, they, they were concerned, naturally. There have been citations issued for just about every abuse you can think of. And what is troubling about the fact that I'm grateful they were issued, but they apparently weren't very well enforced. When they don't have sufficient staffing, it's very difficult to do the job they want to do. And it takes a group of volunteers in the lack of action on the part of government to enforce its own regulations, um, what happened is what always happens in such situations. People became enraged and they didn't like having smoke spilled upon them every time Halico decided to spill smoke upon them, nor were they enthused about this slag heap behind us. And so they began to organize. There was a group called Ormond Beach Observers. That was, uh, that was Cynthia Leak, Roma Armbrust, and Al Sanders who put that together. But that was just the first. We now have the Ormond Beach Task Force. And we are lobbying, and we are testifying, and we are trying to, to get as many citizens involved as it is possible to get involved. So come out, come out, wherever you are, and help. <laughs> there was a wonderful Quaker gentleman uh, named Bayard Rustin, and he said one of the ways to avoid violence was to speak truth to power. This is a treasure that cannot be allowed to be squandered. We have to save it because this is part of the last four and, per four and one half percent of wetlands left in the state of California. They had an antiquated plant and uh, they were facing lawsuits. They already had one lawsuit filed against them and they just found it, you know, what, why save the falling down plant when they asked to build another furnace and the city did balk on that. They said, you're not putting in another furnace. So they, had, they knew they had to leave. The, one, the operation they had was heavily polluting and no good. So they left and left us with this legacy, the 40 foot high slag heap. And of course, the radioactive steel glows in the dark. <laughs> so we'll be able to find you no matter where you hide, Bill. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for coming and discussing this issue with us. This is a very important issue for the county, for this town, the city, and anybody that comes here. You are right. We're fortunate the wind is blowing in the opposite direction. Yes, we are. We and are. Uh, I'm very honored that you came today to help us explain to the community what the problem is here. And I can't tell you how grateful I am to you and to your crew, Bill, because Every opportunity to reach someone new is an opportunity to find someone willing to help. I'd like to tell you what it is we want from the city of Oxnard. Okay. We want, most of all, no industry brought onto this land, anywhere on this land. We want no encroachment in the upland like a huge, massive development that will impact the wetland. We want a welcome center that will serve as educational space and the beginning of a self-directed tour. And we want the city's permission and support to do that. And then we won't disturb the nesting birds and we'll have more birds next year. And we want the active and honest report of the city in order to pursue 
what can be not only an environmental treasure here and a natural wonder, but also a financial gain because ecotourism is the fastest growing new business in our country. Wetlands need to be preserved and they need to be enhanced and most of all, they need to be enjoyed. Thank you very much. Thank you, This Bill. has been quite a pleasure. Thank you for coming. This concludes our interview today at the Ormond Beach Estuary and Cleanup Site. We're hoping that you take this information to the City Council, to the Governor, to whoever you wish to speak it to, and make your point known. We need these wetlands preserved, not for us, but for our future. Not for my future, but your grandchildren's future. Thank you very much, and until next time, remember, together we can change the world. Environmental impacts on our coastal communities have never been greater. From pollution to climate change, coastal communities are ground zero. Surf and River Report brings you the latest developments impacting our coastal communities. We'll talk with experts about how environmental pollution, development, and climate change is affecting our coastal and river ecosystems. It's all right here on the Surf and River Report.